All right, well, this will be the third test long bore scope that I've shown you guys. And uh, this one, again, offers something different than the other two. So this one here, as you can see, is a long, rigid one. So similar to like the Lyman where you have a, a solid metal bore or a Hawkeye where you have a metal uh, rod, uh, so does this one. It attaches much like their first computer edition, which has the uh, cord on it here. Now, the nice thing is, being that this is the power cord, you can roll it up a lot tighter because there's no fiber optics in here. Uh, before, you had a connection at the end of the power cord that led to the fiber optic end, and that cord was pretty susceptible. Uh, if you tightened it, uh, rolled it up too tight, it would crack or break, and, and uh, Teslong was good about replacing them, but... Uh, you know, they've certainly sent out plenty of recommendations against doing that now. So with the solid bore one, uh, you don't have that problem. It's going to connect the exact same way. It comes with a, a USB-C uh, connector, which I really love for the Max. Uh, if you pull this out, it'll also flip around to a uh, USB micro uh, uh, USB as well. It comes with extra mirrors, so it seems like just about everything they're doing now, they're sending out extra mirrors, and I think that's really smart. Like I've said before, um, I think that really shows that they're trying to uh, improve the, the user experience and also probably save themselves time and hassle of shipping out extra mirrors and whatnot. Now, it comes in a really nice, uh, and this stuff's always a nightmare to try to photograph, but it comes in a really nice heavy-duty cardboard tube with a an end on it that... Uh, you know, is like a slide over tube kind, which I really appreciate. It's not just a like plastic cap in the end. You know, it, it actually comes off. Everything fits back in here uh, really nicely. And, uh, you know, this helps keep you from having to go get any kind of a hard case for it. It also comes with a little uh, foam sleeve. While I don't know that it's absolutely necessary uh, once shipping to your house is done, it is kind of nice, and uh, I have, uh, just while I've been testing this, slipped it back over uh, the actual rod every time I put it away. Now, just like on, and I'll do my best to show you here, but just like on uh, the other test long items, there is actually uh, the mirror piece, which threads on, and then there is a small collar, like a locking collar, that is, it comes from Teslon pretty tight against the main rod. Uh, in fact, uh, to be honest, I didn't see it the first couple times I used any of these. Uh, and I was using like a little piece of tape to hold it in place at times. And um, a buddy of mine who I had um, given him one to play with uh, said, you know, there's a locking collar on there. And, and uh, had I fully read the instructions and realized what they were trying to tell me, I would have found that. But uh Hey, I can admit when I'm wrong. So uh, if you haven't found this little locking collar, don't feel stupid. Uh, you're not alone. Anyway, that allows you to adjust your mirror in or out as far as you want on the threads and then tighten it down so that it's not loosey-goosey on here, which is great. Um, this happens to be where my 7 mil likes to be. Uh, you know, your mileage may vary depending on what you're looking at and how you want to look at it. Uh, I can't say that image quality is really any different. Let's go ahead and... Uh, stick it in this barrel here and uh you know i'll just kind of show you guys um again it, it does exactly the same thing that every other test long bore scope has done this is a very hammered barrel uh, that i use for doing this kind of stuff with let me pull back to the chamber area here uh you know again very good quality you can definitely see any kind of little milling marks, scratches, and you know different things like that inside the chamber. And it does come with flat sides on kind of, I guess you would call it the grip. And uh, that does allow for you to, you know, turn it inside. You are still, however, at the mercy of this flexible cable, so you can't obviously spin it too much without this cable spinning up and then it also comes with a little rubber guide that uh, I suppose were you um, you know I don't know I, I kind of have mixed emotions about this rubber guide because it'll obviously fit up inside my chamber and then stop at some point but it's not it's not really loose on there it's pretty tight 
So I think if you were looking at a fixed distance, um, or if you were, you know, let's say you attached it up here, and then as I push, uh, you know, it's moving. So then uh, let's say I find something right here, I could pull it out and use it as a marking gauge, uh, presuming I knew that the end of my chamber ended right about there. I could say, okay, right about where the tip of the mirror is is where my problem is in the barrel. But, um, you know, there's other ways to measure that on these things. Just, I mean, if nothing else, just holding your finger. So, and, and normally when I have a gun that I'm using this on, I actually have a dedicated bore sight bore guide that I use, uh, which would render this even more um, kind of useless for me. But I think there are some uses people may find for it. It just isn't something that I'm probably going to personally use. Uh, there's not much other than that. Um, you know, with these test long bore scopes, uh, they have really, you know, if you've read any of the forums where people have been talking about this, you know, they've really changed the game because, you know, before it was a rich man's, uh, kind of a rich man's toy. You had to buy a Hawkeye and, it, you know, 600 to a thousand bucks, depending on what model you bought. Uh, more if you wanted to have any kind of digital, um, you know, use a, a, a phone mount or a computer or something like that uh you know Lyman came out with one I tested one uh, a while ago and it was you know for the money it was great at the time um now I I know that there have been improvements to the Lyman I know people still really like the Lyman I don't have anything against it um this just happens to be something that has now hit the market has a price point you know depending on which of the three models that you are choosing from you know this one runs um if I remember, it's kind of in the middle of the Wi-Fi and then the flexible cable. So, you know, between the three models, you're looking anywhere from 50 to 75 bucks. Um, I think they've been running some coupons off and on as well for 10% or something like that. A couple bucks here or there. Um, you know, but I think it's really hard to beat. Now, I, you know, I'm with as many people as possible in the sense that, um, you know, I hate buying something from China if I don't have to, if there's a U.S. company that can you know, do something equivalent. But, you know, I think the reality is for a lot of us, um, you know, we spend a lot of money in this sport and there are certain toys that we just probably wouldn't get because we don't use them that often. And, uh, you know, for me, a Hawkeye was one of those things. I had a Hawkeye, um, I used it, um, but it was weird. You know, I was, I was almost more worried about breaking it or, um, you know, being gentle with it, this and that. Um, so I probably didn't bring it out and use it as often as I probably should have. With something like this, it's 50 bucks. I don't mind if it breaks. Um, you know, I can literally buy 15 of these for the price of a Hawkeye. And while that's, you know, to some people, probably not the greatest rationale for getting it, it's a reality in, in the sport that we play in. And, you know, to be able to do this with a 50, 60, $70 item, and, you know, I've seen every kind of discussion online now from inspecting your gunsmith's work to checking out what a factory barrel looks like to looking inside of dies, looking inside your refrigerator, looking inside of, you know, uh, brass, looking at primer pockets. I mean, there's some crazy stuff that you can do uh, just with the end of, you know, this little, this little guy right here. And, uh, you know, as a result, I think that these will continue to have a profound effect on uh, the shooting sports, um, you know, much like innovations in other other aspects of reloading and, um, you know, everything else. So anyway, uh, I think at this point, you know, I can't really say that one is better than the other. I think the cable version versus the solid rod versus the Wi-Fi, they all have an intended audience. This is great for the at-home uh, type user. This is definitely not portable. I think the Wi-Fi one lends itself to portability, although the downside would be having to charge it uh, and, and you know make sure that it's you know connectable to whatever you're using at that time. The flexible, the all flexible version of this one, uh, again, has its place. It can be transported anywhere. It doesn't require uh, charging. It just needs a computer with its own power. Uh, so I think people are going to start picking out, you know, what fits their needs rather than what's the newest one that's come out. Uh, I don't know that there's anything else in the pipeline right now for Teslong, uh, but, you know, they reach out to me every time they've got something new coming and uh, I haven't heard anything, although this one literally just came out a couple days ago. So, um, you know, pick the one that works for you. Have fun with it. Learn about your barrels. Learn about your cleaning procedures. 
you know, learn about what's inside your dies, learn about what your brass looks like, you know, take the opportunity with this technology to really learn more about what's going on with every aspect of your shooting. So hope you enjoy and talk to you soon.